We have uh, do we have audio? Yes, we have audio. We're here. Yes. Give everybody a minute to settle down. Oh, they're popping. Yeah. It's apple juice, that French Clicquot apple yeah, juice. Yeah. Apple juice. Yeah, top me off. Yeah, top me off. Thank you. So he's waiting. Yeah. Oh! Sorry, sir. Yeah, that's the idea. We're celebrating a group marriage anniversary. Can we get a hand, please? Thanks. <laughs> We've all been married for six years. We, we uh, all touch each other. It's amazing what you can do in West Virginia. Before. All right. Yeah, well, welcome to uh, Building Hacker Spaces. I'm Count Zero from the Cult of the Dead Cow, and uh, yeah. oh, thank you. Give it up! Woo! Oh. We have a really great lineup of people here uh, from actually uh, not only around the country in the United States, but around the world. And um, what we are hoping with this talk is to share some of our experiences with setting up real world hacker spaces. Uh, basically, you know, physical spaces where a bunch of people pay rent and pile all their shit together, all their electronic gear, and uh, work on projects. And, you know, just basically, you know, be themselves like Java Man. We keep it real. And uh, what I want to do first is just go, because I think, well, where's Broadway Hacker? He's not here yet. We're going to go, we're going to, we're going to go down the, the line here, and I think everyone should introduce themselves real briefly. And then we have some slides to show you. You know, just to give you some details about what uh, it takes to set up these spaces. We're not up here to tell you, you know, uh, we set up these things and they're so great. We're here to, to share our experiences with you and to engage in a Q&A so that if any of you out there are interested in getting a bunch of friends together and you want to set up a space, maybe, you know, get a dedicated network connection, work on projects, um, we want you to learn from the stuff that we've done. and Learn what not to and do. And the mistakes that we've made, the fuck-ups that we've done. And what goes wrong? Everyone loves stories like that, you know, how things how things go wrong. So uh, we're going to start on the left here, and I don't know if all these mics are working. I am uh, I'm Reverend Al from New Hack City East, New Hack City West. Woo! 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 Uh, Hi, I'm Guides from New Hack City West. How's it going? Yeah, I'm Death Veggie, the uh, Minister of Propaganda for Cult of the Dead Cow, and a founding member of New Hack City East, New Hack City West. Thank, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Java Man, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. uh, I'm from Philadelphia Walnut Factory, which is a fucking A. And uh, so that's my thing. Uh, binary, uh, hasty pastry. Woo! Yeah. He's the quiet. He's the quiet one. Uh, Snarfblad from I Bleed for This, and uh, I'm from the pizza space of Somerville, Mass. I am Dr. Nick from the Philadelphia Walnut Factory, and I am a drunk, not an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to meetings. Hey, I'm um, Shardy the from the Hacker Halfway House here in New York City. Hi, I'm Freak Out from uh, Cult of the Dead Cow. I've done Hell, Phoenix Project, New Hack City East, New Hack City West, and The Hasty Pastry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mangala, and I'm from Husky in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to start through oh, a couple. Oh, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm the guy drinking on stage. I'm going to start through the slides now. The first up is the Walnut Factory. So, uh, I'll, I'll take it. Just take it. So, uh, yeah, I just want to run through some pictures of the Walnut Factory. This is a little bit washed out, but basically, you can see the shithole that we live in. Uh, basically, we rent a, a, a little room in a, in a factory, and we have a couch in there, a, a rack full of junk, and we have a network rack, and we have a, 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 a 36 inch TV with video games hooked up to it. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, God almighty. Uh, so here is our rack, and uh, this machine, that is ghetto.org right there. So if uh, anyone ever wondered what it looked like, that's it. 
Looks ghetto. Looks ghetto. Is a dual P Pro 200. It's blazing fast. Uh, but this is kind of like what we work in. That's our network uh, area. And we have just a general workshop of, of uh, spare hardware laying around. Uh, anything that we need, we pretty much have in-house. Uh, mostly uh, trash picked or uh, decommissioned from other locations. This is what the space looked like while it was empty. Uh, on the left is our landlord, Steve, and uh, some people on the, on the right. And this is a view from the roof. So yay, Philadelphia. Nice. And here's the most critical things. This is the, uh, the statistics for us. Uh, it's about $100 uh, per person per month to run this. Um, it's about, uh, we have uh, eight, over eight members and six people are reliable for cash uh, every month. <laughs> and it's very, it's very important to distinguish between the two people. There's two things. There are six people who will always give us money and sometimes those people are late, sometimes they're not, not because they intend to be. But everyone's going to mention the same thing. Our bandwidth is provided by uh, Dr. Nick of Dr. Nick's Bandwidth Service. Yes. Uh, NetAccess.com. Yeah, net it's from NetAccess.com. Uh, and our core projects, uh, mostly internal maintenance right now, doing ghetto colo work and supporting some artists that are involved in the local art community. Uh, our core problems, I'll be dead honest with you, is organization. We're very poorly organized. We, uh, we have a hard time getting people off their ass to do things. Uh, and that's uh, all of our own, yeah, it's funny how it works. It's all of our own faults. And so we had, kind of had started out with these very high expo expectations of what we wanted to do. And we had to ratchet down those expectations over time after we realized what people's uh, free time actually was. So um, let me turn it over to the Hasty Pastry crew. You want to stand on the podium? You, got two you can stand at the podium. Oh, and you got the, sure. I got the mobile mic. Why do you call it the Hasty Pastry? Well, uh, it used to be a... <laughs> it used to be a bakery, and uh, that bakery apparently was not uh, licensed to be a bakery. <laughs> it was <laughs> a renegade it was, bakery. It was licensed to be a self-service rogue wash, bakery, and it had actually been Gypsy in operation bakery. for as much as ten years. And you know, I mean, they even changed. I mean, they changed the whole place and put in ovens and a walk-in refrigerator. Had been there ten years, and uh, finally, the city realized that they weren't supposed to be there, and Surprise. you know. Uh, they lost their license, and we decided that instead of like having a you know sort of cyber tech name, we'd go with uh, Hasty Pastry. And that's a sexy binary there. The, the URL is uh, hastypastry.net. If you want to look at the, okay. the website too. So uh, here we have the Hasty Pastry. That's our our electronics uh, work workbench. Um, We've got uh, Maya's working on the, the Sunrise uh, Linux distribution. Um, we've got uh, another workstation here. That's mine. That's where oh, they uh, keep you when you're bad. <laughs> That's the hole into the basement. We have a little trap door. It's where they keep the gimp. Yes. They beat uh, people that's where place. we keep the gimp. Yeah, he, he cracks the pack. This is This is our idea of, uh, you know, colo space. <laughs> <laughs> this um, looks very familiar. Yeah. Just, in, in every hacker space, you'll see duct tape on the colo. Dude, that's not even duct tape. That's masking tape. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. What the hell kind of joint are you running? <laughs> that's uh, mini moose. Obligatory Zim. <laughs> Zim reference. A Z Invader Zim reference there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, here's uh, the front area of the space. Um, one of the things uh, I learned with, with New Hack was it was just very good to sort of split, here's your fun area, here's your project workspace, um, you know, keep them separate. There's an LCD projector there too, so for watching movies and a, a payphone that works. Uh, and, and, uh, the Lady of the Vax and uh, all held people, over from uh, the loft. All people pay reverence to the Lady of the Vax, please. The infamous loft. Um, also, uh, obligatory, uh, you know, cow yeah. reference. Oh, dude, you skipped ahead. Oh, oh, back up. The back Whoa, arrow. Oh, the back up. arrow. Corp. Oh, you ruined Christmas. It's a Macintosh. It's a Macintosh. That's the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, we, we, we don't understand, oh, yeah, Ma we don't understand uh, 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 what's it called, PowerPoint. Hey, Where's a... Brian Oblivion? <laughs> yeah. Question. Oh. He knows Mac. So, yeah. so <laughs> anyways, there's another shot of the space. You can get the, the lady there. Um, the area over by that wall down there Where's is uh, down at the basement. Where's Calchuk? Uh, I guess there was no picture of Calchuk. Oh. No. Ooh. No, I didn't. Dude, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, why don't you tell us about Kalchuk? Kalchuk is the... I should have brought Kalchuk. Well, Kalchuk can't be photographed. His image will not show up on film. Kalchuk is the embodiment of fear of the elite. So, you ever have the experience where, you know, at 2600, I mean, there's that group of, you know, elite people. And then there's sort of like you got your new people. And they want to approach the elite, but they can't. They can't go over there. They might have some kind of question, but they can't make it over there. That's the spirit of Kalchuk. He sacrifices chickens and stuff to this thing. Yeah, it's really well, weird. I don't know. Every hacker yeah, space no, yeah. has a shrine with chickens. some sort of religious yeah. thing. To like it. a cement bust of Mr. T, for instance? Yeah, or Kalchuk. Um, here's the, uh, the HP stats. Um, we have uh, you know, six regular contributors and pay between 150 and 200. Um, I recommend not paying anything more than 200 a person. I don't care how much you make. It, you know, um, uh, previously we've go back know, to we've Russia. Paid, we've paid more, <laughs> um, and it's just not right. But uh, we have uh, we have T1 uh, through a co-op ISP, which Binary will talk about later. Um, core projects. Uh, you know, one of the things about spaces is you will end up. The space is supposed to be there to help you, you know, do all these different research projects and get together and organize. And you end up spending so much time just working on the environment and getting it to a state that you can work on it. Amen. Uh, it's, uh, we work on, you know, the Sunrise Linux, um, some co-location, uh, the Sonic Beating, uh, sort of uh, uh, Psytrance uh, Dance. That's bi um, binaries, binaries website. Homemade, and uh, uh, 15,000 watt PA. Yeah. And uh, various, you know, sort of CDC related projects. Um, this space compared to, you know, other spaces, uh, you know, I've dealt with um, very, you know, cramped for the, the number of people and number, like, you know, the equipment we have and the projects we have going on. Uh, Mark, you taking yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So the next, the next group is uh, New Hack City. Well, I'd like to say that New Hack City was founded in, what, 1995? Yeah, New Hack City was originally um, a house in Alston, Massachusetts, um, which these guys lived at. It was, uh, it was a hacker house with no, uh, actually, do you want to talk a little bit about the old New Hack City? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what else you can say. It was a hacker well, there was house. No there was, basement. I was there, Freakout was there, Silicosis was there, Tweety Fish from CDC was there, various other people, and basically, um, it was a sort of developed as a place to take in sort of refugees from other hacker houses and, and hacker-related houses that had fallen apart for various reasons. <laughs> there was Been a evicted, et cetera. But it, it was nice in that when we moved into the house, it had, yes, the basement was kitty litter and sewage. Um, and uh, the landlord, a crazy Israeli guy, was nice enough to basically say, um, if you pay for the, if you do the, what, he ba half. Yeah, he basically went halves and fixed up the basement, you know, put in a cement floor, wired it all up, um, insulated it, and turned it into a sweet uh, hacking space, you know, project space. Um, we, we painted, uh, we painted the, talk to the mic. Talk to the mic, bro. <laughs> we painted the floor uh, uh, circuit board green and uh, with gold. traces all along it. Um, we built our, our own benches. Um, we had, uh, you know, a number of, like, uh, machines that were hanging from chains in the wall, which, you know, cleared up our desk space. <laughs> So our original plan was to, to actually leave a space in the cement so we could put hard drives in it. So if the, the feds ever came, we could uh, have stuff mounted in cement. But we didn't actually get around to do that. Yeah. yeah. He jokes, but we were actually very concerned about yeah. those types of things during those days. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. After, I, after euphoria, kind well, yeah. of. Well, why don't you yeah. tell the story about when, when you went back and they said the FBI. Yeah, so I actually visit. After, this is after New Hack. This is, there's two things. Up. New Hack City East, which is this hacker house, and the New Hack City West, which no one was supposed to live We at. all packed up and moved to California. So everyone moved to California to follow the dot-com gold. And uh, some of us, uh, me and Rosie Riv, went back and uh, explored the New Hack City East. And the people who lived there hadn't been in the basement at all because there was no electricity. So they hadn't, they, there was still a bunch of computers and bullshit in the basement. And a fire hydrant. Still running, which was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty tight. So then everyone went to the West Coast and followed the dot-com gold, and uh, everyone had these nice jobs where we could afford $300 a month to, you know, throw in a bunch of money for uh, a bandwidth colo and uh, space for parties and stuff like that. And I don't know if any of you have been to California very much, but everyone likes, you know, ecstasy and raves and, you know, lots of crazy music yeah, and everyone. shit like that. So we did a lot of that, and <laughs> it was pretty fun. Um, a lot of fun. I can't remember a lot of it. Um, <laughs> 
can can you get back to the visit? I, I, I remember yeah. you without any pants yeah. on. Does that count? Yeah, the visit. So uh, what? What? Yeah. No. Slide. What, what do you mean the visit? Slide. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that the first the first big difference between New Hack City East and New Hack City West was New Hack City West had a hot tub. Which yeah, I think that's pretty true. Much Basically, we found a. Uh, actually, Chuck found Chuck the architect who wasn't here. God bless his soul. Here's a little champagne. Uh, <laughs> The brothers didn't make it. If they found a, they found a hot tub in the, you know, this is California, so it's actually part of the building code that you have to build a hot tub into any space that you're building into. So, uh, so we had a hot tub, we had a big old deck and a lot of parties and stuff like that. And we were able to raise a lot of money through those kinds of things, like a lot of goodwill. And we did a lot of presentations like GSM cracking and stuff like that. People would do like press conferences from there and try to host a lot of stuff and uh, host a lot of stuff on our servers. Um, we did a lot of media work too. Yeah, the, the, media, I think. Me, I call it media outreach. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of media work. We did, um, the we, we back orifice. yeah, the original back orifice launch was from there. Also, um, and focus. Also, focus. Yeah. oh yeah, sorry. So, um, so but, well, I kind of am going about that. We had maybe 10 core people and maybe 20 to 30 people in the, in the, in the whole community. And New Hack City West went on for about, uh, from about 1997 when we first got the place and we moved to another space. We got kicked out of this one building because we kept on breaking into the well, building. they only gave us two keys. They gave us two Medico keys, which cost like $50 to replicate because it's like that angle cut. And but so we figured out we could just we pry just, the door open. We just kind of broke the lock on the building which and they kept on going three in. years until they... Yeah, it was a pretty tight building. Yeah. So then we moved into the ghetto of Sixth and Market, which is like a lot of people pissing and shitting on the sidewalks out top. And um, I actually which is had people fun. trying to hide behind me to smoke crack. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, uh, that yeah. actually got to count towards Veggie's uh, community service hours for parole. <laughs> just like helping the crack people. So uh, so we had a lot of uh, we had we had some projects, we had some software and some hardware projects. We built a lot of walls. One of the main architects is this guy named Chuck uh, Charlie Rhodes. Chuck can do anything. Who's He's a CDC really guy. Really amazing. Chuck from CDC. Really amazing architects, and a lot of, we built a lot of walls, and that, that was that was pretty awesome. Uh, the, the space we moved into the second time was uh, formerly a, um, a, sweatshop. a sweatshop for sewing people. So like 30 like Asian women would it had like lot, it had crowd into it for about already. 13 that hours sounds, a day. That and sounds like so completely unfamiliar. What do you think, mittens. Nick? Yeah, they would sew <laughs> mittens and stuff like that. It was pretty. Well, what tight. I meant it was already it was already it had yeah. power the power requirements. That yeah, we the needed, power and was and really it had nice. the cooling requirements that yeah. we needed. All right, uh, so the last thing I'm going to say is that, uh, that because it was an offline hacker scene, it was a big social scene, the parties are all the time, it definitely had the offline problems, which is everyone partied together, slept together, and had a lot of drama together. Yeah. Everyone slept with each other's girlfriends, and it pretty much fucking collapsed, and uh, everyone ran out of money. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's it. And uh, pretty and much just like the last to the end. Yeah. <laughs> is there any more champagne over there? There's, there's I'm more, sorry, is there any more sparkling, more apple, sparkling juice? apple juice over here? Thank you. That was a good way to get him to stop talking, wasn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm going to talk about the original loft. This is the original uh, server. No, I'm kidding. This is actually uh, shortwave radio out in California that I was working on. But uh, the original loft um, uh, was founded by, uh, basically it was me and Brian Oblivion uh, way back in 1992. And uh, it was a space in the south end of Boston. Uh, in the, uh, uh, it was in a building that used to be like a, a factory, so it was like you know the oil-soaked floors, which is really nice for like fire hazard stuff. Speaking and um, it started back in 1992. Piano factory. Yeah, and I was looking for old pictures, and like the only ones I could find were like these old 640 by 480 gifts that I had as an advertisement for the BBS ATDT, which was. Uh, is there a? Has, has everyone here heard of the loft? By the way. The original yeah. loft. Let's give a hand up for the loft. Yeah. That is the weakest response I ever heard. Come on! <laughs> the, uh, the, the loft has a, has, has a long and really great history. I mean, it started out, uh, you know, basically it was uh, just space for us to store crap. And uh, this is an original picture. That's Brian Oblivion back when he used to wear a hat. He and wore he a hat everywhere all the time. All the time. We wondered, like, if he had a plate in his head or something yeah. wrong with his head because he always had that hat. And... Um, at the bottom, it says, Adventures at the Loft, home of ATDT, 617-350-STIFF. That was our dial-up number. Do you have any pictures of the, the Vaxxin? Oh, well, the Vaxxin are coming. So this is just an example of the, of the initial, this is, think back 1992. Sherman set the Wayback Machine to 1992. And all we were primarily concerned with initially was basically getting together manuals, getting together printed material and hardware. That was our main focus. So this is a picture of us with a U-Haul with a ton of manuals, a, literally a truckload of manuals. There's uh, Brian Oblivion with his book, Zen and the Art of Codes. He looks so young. <laughs> he looks, weren't we all so young back then? Yes. And um, there are the Vaxxin. 
Yeah, we uh, actually we our wildlife we would, photographers. Spot what we would do was uh, we would look for uh, people them. like primarily academic institutions that were upgrading their mainframe hardware, and we would just like basically would put out you know on Usenet like things saying basically like. If you come with a truck, you can take it, please, because well, we it weighs two thousand pounds. So we would we would like yeah sure we'll rent a U-Haul and we'll bring it in the loft. And these are the these are the Vaxen. It says our wildlife photographer spots the Vaxen grazing peacefully in a shaded grove of buildings. Do you have a picture of Jack the crack smoker? No, but I'm going to explain. That's one of the problems we had with the original loft. But so anyway, um, oh, back it up. So there it is. You can see a Vax 11750 in an unnatural habitat. Yeah. yeah. We set all these bad boys up, and we carried them up a flight of stairs. And uh, I still... Yeah, that, that sucked. My knees remember it every time it rains. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> there's, there's a little pullback. You see, like, you've got, like, the pillows, because we were trying to keep them from bouncing around too much. I remember riding back in a truck with Oblivion back from New Jersey, picking up these babies, and, like, they're rolling around in the back. And I said, like, gee, wouldn't it be neat like, if we got killed by a computer? <laughs> so anyway, that was... So this is sort of a summary of, like, you know, initially, uh, it was just Sweden's a... Wearing any pants. You know, this is back in 1992, so, you know, it was about 100, 150 monies per member. There were probably about five of us, and there were additional people that grew over time. You know, our bandwidth cost, and it was, was dial-up. Yeah. yeah. B34. Then, then didn't you get a didn't you get at least line 56k? Uh, no, I mean, I, well, I was later, but initially the, it was funny too because um, you know our initial contributors, members, six people, core projects. All we were con concerned about was just like getting our computers fucking connected to each other, and somehow magically getting it connected Playing to the internet. Playing network doom. And it was initially the initial thing that started us really getting serious about getting our computers networked over coax, 10 base two, was doom came out, and that was. Yeah. That was the driving Give force. Sugar. Basically, it was, uh, it was, you know, we wanted to be able to blast the hell out of each other with rockets. And, um, and so our core projects, remember, this is 10, over, like 12 years ago, it was really just internal networking and hardware acquisition. And uh, the core problems eventually, well, you know, it's not really a problem. I mean, spaces evolve over time. And that's one of the things you have to realize when you start a space. Initially, it was, a, it was very much sort of a communal kind of communistic, socialist kind of environment. We just Go wanted to, to get Russia. together, have fun, and you know, watch videos and do cool projects. And eventually, commercial and people were interested in taking things more commercial, and that was cool. It evolved over time. Um, but it's important to remember those kinds of things. When you set up a space, and I remember um, you know, just realizing at the moment when it sort of started changing to become more commercial, it's, it's, everything evolves over time. So you can't expect what you set up to be frozen. It's going to evolve. And the other problem we had was crack, actually. That was a real problem. Uh, we had people Jack smoking crack, crack on the loading dock outside in front of the space. And, and we, had, uh, we actually took some pictures and we had some, if anybody has these old stickers from some previous hopes. I actually found a big stash of those right before I came. Yeah, and our motto was, uh, the loft more fun than a pipe full of crack. Hit zero. And we had a picture of someone lighting up. It was great. Zero. What about that VCR that was up near the front of the door? Do you know what I'm talking about at all? The what? The VCR? The VCR that got stolen, the broken VCR. Oh, we had people who broke into it too, yeah, and people like took all of us cell, all, they took all our cell phones. They took my copy of Heavy Metal, man, that fucking <laughs> pissed me off. It was in the VCR that they stole. And this was, before, this was before it was released, okay, so this was a bootleg copy. I was so fucking pissed. I actually slept on the couch for a week after that with my shotgun, waiting for the fucker to come back. I, I was waiting. I remember you taking your wrist rocket to the to Jack the Crack. Well, that was too. Yeah, we had a wrist rocket, and we used to shoot ball bearings at the people shooting, uh, uh, firing up crack in the loading dock. And it was funny because like we wouldn't want to hit them, but we'd like shoot next to them with these sparks flying, and they're just like, <laughs> didn't phase them. So it was at the time. It's funny because it was in the South End. Right now, it's a very you know fancy Tony kind of area, but at the time, it was real kind of sketchy. Um, but, uh, you know, that's some of the things you have to think about when you're setting up a space, the physical environment around you. At the time, we were in a real ghetto, so. All right, so we're moving right along. Where's the wireless mic? Hand it to the next person. Or you can stand up here. Relinquish the podium. I don't want to. So, uh, I'm here to talk about Pusky. Uh, Pusky happens to be in a squatted house. We all like Pusky in this country, don't we? Yeah! <laughs> not what you think it means. 
But, uh, half pussy, half ASCII? Pictured here, you can see the squatted houses. Both of them happen to be monuments. One is a city monument, the other one's a national monument. In Frank's house. And they happen to be in the center of the city of Utrecht. That's not right. And naturally, that's uh, <laughs> not a very pretty sight for the city council. You know, they've had a lot of problems with the squatters, trying to get them out. But uh, it's not much they can do, because they have uh, laws. Is that really where Anne Frank lived, or no? No, that was in Amsterdam. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Dude, that's are those, are right. those bananas? What are those? Are those bananas? Actually, that's a spinal cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a, okay. a banana spinal cord. Yeah. I see bananas. Um, <laughs> if you look all the way in the corner, right on the bottom, right where that uh, furthermost car is, that's where Pusky actually is. It's not the whole squat. Uh, Pusky is just one room, and what we try to do is uh, provide free internet access and open source training to people who can't afford it. Um, actually, you probably want to know what Pusky means. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. I'm not ready to get Can you make up something cool? Yeah, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, Pusky is actually uh, was the second squatted internet cafe was uh, modeled after ASCII in Amsterdam, which... Uh, it is half pussy and half ASCII. Which means uh, Amsterdam Subversive Center of Information yeah, Interchange. So Pusky, kind of making fun of ASCII, in a friendly way, they call themselves Progressive Utrecht, Subversive Center of Information Interchange. <laughs> yeah. And that's what that means. You Europeans are so witty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's wait a... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nice, come back, nice. Uh, let me tell you about squatting in the Netherlands, uh, why this is possible. There are two general rules to squat. It is legal if the house has, is not being used and if it has been empty for more than a year. After that, uh, squatters can just walk in, call the police and say, hey, we've taken the building. And you've got that the law part out of the way. And all it is actually after that is all your problems have to do with the owner of the building. <laughs> if he wants to get you out, he has to uh, guns submit a court injunction, injunction to get you out. Are guns legal in that area of the world? Or uh, commonly held? Blunderbusses. Prostitution's there, no. legal there, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I hear. They, they can prostitute you out. Pimpin's legal. Shotgunning weed is legal, but not shotguns. <laughs> Keyboards are legal. <laughs> yeah, this house was on, uh, went on fire. It used to be in a furniture store. It was called Ubica, as you see there. It was a mattress and furniture store, and it went on fire. The owner didn't really care about uh, the building, and the roof caved in after the fire. So the city council... You guys fixed the roof? Hmm? Well, I'll get to that in no. a minute. <laughs> The city council, being that these two buildings are uh, monu national monuments and city monuments, uh, the city council tried to get uh, the owner to fix the roof, and he wouldn't do it because he didn't, really didn't care. So uh, they sent a contractor in to fix the roof, and they charged him for the payment. And the owner said, well, I didn't order that. It's too expensive, and I'm not going to pay for it. So the city council had a problem with the owner for a while, and uh, this house was... Uh, empty for about two and a half years before the squatters came in. And uh, the squatters were in there for about 10 years, and after that, a few of them decided to make Pusky in that corner room. <laughs> oh. Yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I gotta watch what I say here. He's, he's ignoring the euphemisms, I know. Isn't it? It's so cute. The other one's called ASCII. That doesn't sound that bad, does it? <laughs> it's, it's actually tits. Yeah! <laughs> Text files and girlies. Yeah, naturally, the advantage of squatting a house is you don't pay rent. <laughs> yeah! So uh, we do this basically for nothing. The only costs we have are electricity and internet which we share with the rest of the squatters. They can amount to about 50 euros or about 50 bucks a month. 
Um, naturally, uh, like I said, electricity costs money, and uh, we rely on donations. There are about eight core members working at Pusky and 12 in ASCII. And we get volunteers from all over the world. Our core projects are spreading our idea. We're trying to move to other cities in Europe. Trying to offer hacker spaces where hackers can uh, present anything. A lot of hacker groups in the area don't have a place uh, where they can meet up and give presentations, so we offer that. And we are also thinking about offering web hosting and web space for people who are not allowed to host anywhere else, who have political problems or uh, just problems with their government. <laughs> and naturally, with every advantage, you have disadvantages. Money is our biggest disadvantage. We have some organizational problems, and we're also constantly faced with a threat of eviction, being that uh, it's not ours. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it works. Great. So actually, we're going to introduce uh, Hacker Halfway House now. And uh, I'll just hand the mic over here. New York City. So I uh, took all these pictures of our place, and somehow they didn't make it into the slides. So I'm just going to talk for a little bit. He has and no PowerPoint foo. He could not put them on PowerPoint and, and slides. And against our better judgment, <laughs> we're having a big party at our place tomorrow night. So some of you might even get to see the place, because we're local. So um, yeah, there, there are a few of us here. Um, B9 Punk and Far over there. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, I don't know if Carton's here or if he's down at the knock, but uh, he's also here. Um, but yeah, we basically have been there for about a year. We're in Brooklyn. We're in a fairly sketchy part of an industrial part of Brooklyn. Bushwick, to be specific. No sleep and we, we got a loft, and we built walls, and we tore down very sketchy walls and built new ones in their place. And All right, shut up. <laughs> And we've been working on our projects there. Uh, Benign Punk, was, all, all the banners and the canvases and all that that you've seen around here that Benign Punk was doing, that was in our living room. Uh, we did a bunch of the networks. here for the banners. Aren't those awesome? Aren't those awesome? Come on. Excellent. You don't like the banners? Mention the artists. Come on, give them props. She's up next. Props. Um, but we, we did a lot of the uh, network testing and staging for the network here at our place. Uh, we had some meetings to do some testing out of stuff. At our last party, we throw these really big parties after all the local NYC 2600 meets, which is probably how most people around here know us, because we throw really big parties, um, which we'll be doing tomorrow. Yeah, the bucket. That's really bright. Um, basically, we've got about 2,000 square feet of space in a warehouse in Brooklyn. Um, we've got five to six people, depending on how you want to count it. Uh, we're paying a little bit more than these other guys because we're in New York City, of course. Uh, but it's pretty cheap compared to everything else out here. Uh, we're also out in the boonies of Brooklyn, so we're not able to easily get a T1. We're looking into a wireless link, you know, five, five and a half megabits, but right now we've got uh, 1.1 megabit DSL. It, it works pretty well. We're hosting a number of projects out of our place, including the uh, 2600 IRC network, uh, Ivy Ministries, Ocule, various other things. So you might have seen stuff that we're hosting. Stone Coder. Yeah, Stone Coder. Can't, can't forget about that. Um, our, our big advantages are that we're very central to the big scene out here. There's a lot of stuff going on. We've got our own projects. We've got group projects. There's usually something going on. Uh, some of the disadvantages are, again, disorganization, which seems to be everywhere. And people like Boris. Is Boris here? Get your hands out of my pockets. Yeah, see, people like him. <laughs> like, he, he comes over, and 
he, he eats all of our food and he sleeps on our couch and he takes up the PlayStation and he just, you know, is Boris. So every hackerspace has a person like that. It's, yeah. Yeah. So a leech. Rogue agent. Rogue agent, yes. Or, I think I think you know. As, as we came as he as we came to couch know him, agent couch 006? agent, yes, couch agent 006, yes. You, you stole my line, dude. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We tried to coordinate, yeah, but it doesn't always back. work out. But basically, that's Hacker Halfway House. Uh, we're throwing a party here at the hotel later on tonight. So maybe if you want to find one of us and figure out what's going on, you can come by our party, see the bucket that we're kind of known for, thanks to Benign Punk. You, you, you got to come by and see the bucket. It's you, you'll probably remember it unless you have too much, in which case you won't. Um, but yeah, so we're doing a party tonight and tomorrow at our place. Find us if you want to come by and see the place and see what we have going for us. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we're free to answer any questions. Thank you. Let's hear it, Court. We're going to talk a little bit about cooperative ISPs here, and uh, Binary is going to give us our description right. here. So uh, every you know, workspace needs bandwidth, and you can go with a commercial DSL line or T1, but there's some inherent problems to that, where you really don't know where your traffic's going or who's looking at it. So one way around that is to just start your own ISP. So there's some advantage to that, where you pay basically wholesale bandwidth costs, the same amount that the ISP itself that you'd be using would be paying. You have a pretty inexpensive monthly cost. All you do is pay, you know, the ILEC, uh, your loop cross, uh, and your uh, cross connect, and then your access membership for whatever bandwidth that you're buying at wholesale. And the members are responsible for their own equipment and support, so you don't have to deal with people complaining, or if your line goes down, you just fix the problem yourself. Um, big advantage to that is your ingress and egress traffic are pretty much going to where the ISPs were is bypassing, you know, whatever monitoring systems or whoever else is looking at the traffic and peering directly um, at any different peering point where you decide to co-locate your access router. Go to the next slide. The disadvantage to this are your uh, initial startup cost is pretty high. You have to invest in a pretty decent router, um, the initial cross-connect and setup fee for a DS3 or many T1s, um, and the installation charge for all the lines. You probably need about 10 or 15 people to get involved, um, and you just go a bit to the uh, whatever phone company you have, and you say, hey, I have 10 people I want to place an order for 10 T1s for three years. They'll give you a really good discount. Um, another disadvantage is you really need to have people that know what they're doing uh, to set up a T1. You really can't call anybody to ask for help. You kind of just have to do it yourself. And the other problem is most ILEX require a three-year commitment. But if you can get all that, the advantages pretty much outweigh the disadvantages. And I'm going to use the um, Cambridge Bandwidth Consortium as an example. Uh, this is what we're currently doing in Cambridge, and this is how we have connectivity through the Hasty Pastry. Um, the, uh, the CBC provides dedicated T1s to its C members. CDC? CBC. <laughs> CBC. <laughs> There's approximately 15, or I think 18 members right now uh, that have T1s. Um, and our infrastructure consists of a dedicated enterprise access router and a uh, management server um, in the basement of the Boston City Hall, which is the uh, MXP, or, yeah, uh. MXP in Boston. Um, and we basically just pay for Ethernet VLAN peering. Um, this is our bandwidth, you know, we peer with three or four people. And it's a pretty good way to get uh, cheap bandwidth. You know, we have T1s, you can get it to about 200 to $250 a month for a full T1, and there's not many people looking at it. So. If you're able to, that's something, if you're considering starting a space or even starting a bandwidth uh, co-op in your area, that's something to look, uh, look into. Weed spot. Mini hey, moose. moose. Nurse. Yay, mini moose. Right. Meep. Wait, I have a question. Be before Wait, what happened to that slide? What happened to what slide? What slide? Oh, I think you know the slide I'm talking about. I couldn't get the pictures offline. <laughs> what? Uh, I think he was going to show Tub Girl or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was going to show software. Yeah, it definitely was soft at the point. So this is, uh, we actually, uh, this is perfect. We've got 20 minutes now. So this is, we're going to open it up for Q&A. And um, um, does anyone out there have any uh, alcohol? By any yeah, actually, you know, we're kind of dry because oh, I'm the only guy who brought uh, grape juice. apple juice. Oh, God bless oh, yeah. you. And uh, <laughs> if anyone's got, like, flasks. Uh, thank, thank you, Alex. Shots, jello shots. Uh, please, it'll help us do the, we'll answer your questions faster. You can be on, our, you can be on our panel if you have um, any alcohol. So raise your hand if you got a question, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll. Raise your hand you, if you have any we'll alcohol. This guy right here. Actually, oh, one last thing before. 
One last thing before we get started. Uh, something very critical I forgot to mention is uh, the importance of finding the right balance of personalities. Don't shop for people based off of the skills you think they have, but I, I highly, highly, highly recommend you shop for people based off the personalities you want to collect for the space you want to assemble. Because you will be, uh, um, okay, so one day, all of you are going to get a real job, possibly. And, and Thank you for one the day, Thank you. And, and you're going to do something you. which you swore God you would never you. do. You're going to do something you swore you'd never do, and that's called going into, the, uh, into technical management. And you're going to, in this job, go and herd ten nerds into doing one thing at one point. And you're going to see how fucking impossible it is to do this. It's like herding cats, basically. It's Hurting Cat. cats. I, I would also like to say that I think that every successful hacker house, actor, hacker space needs somebody like a Chuck. Somebody who can do anything, you know, physical yeah. in terms of like building things, making well, things, fabrication. I think what you're saying is the, the A-team model. Of, the A-team model, of, yeah, you need a Mr. T. Hacker spaces. Yeah. Yes, the A-team. You need a Murdoch. A MacGyver, you need, uh, Mr. T. Maga you need exactly. But A-team works in metaphors here. Great chemistry. Great chemistry. <laughs> That's I like important. A-team. I like the herding cats metaphor. It's like herding cats that sleep with each other. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kind of creepy. Yeah. So, um, so I think. So uh, all right, we'll just open it up for questions. And you were you, you had your hand up yeah, first. You need a mic. The yeah, mic, yeah, mic, mic, mic. We got a wireless the mic. Microphone. Get the get the mic boy. Where's mic boy? Mic boy. Go, get, oh, mic boy. Go. Sword boy. Or you can. Sword boy. Yeah, just rip it out of there. It's good. It's all Let's good. Get out. Okay, is it? No, you idiot! You use it there. <laughs> <laughs> Woman. Thank you. Woman. Woman. you you are allowed to speak. Get back in the kitchen. Get back in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen. <laughs> what are you doing wearing shoes? Oh, <laughs> Where's oh. my dinner? Yeah, I want my chicken pot pie. Yeah. Is this working? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take my authority. <laughs> Right. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, that was that was good, but don't do it again. Thank you. Uh, way to break those fat guy stereotypes, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> hey, I, I try. Oh. Right, I try. Right. What's your question? Uh, the question is first. Ask. Time. Queens is a dick. <laughs> it's okay. I'm <laughs> I've met Queens before. Uh, the question is, what do you guys get your bandwidth for uh, for the co like for the cooperative bandwidth? And also, uh, how exactly do you? Um, Go about and letting people in. Like, is it like you meet them through like the meetings and whatnot and so that? And we go through a heavy background screening process, and then uh, <laughs> it involves a lot of drinking usually. Uh, actually, that, that it involves really measuring is it. up. Actually, I'm serious. I I'm know, very it, serious. Actually, I worked with someone who once said that they would never hire someone that they couldn't take out drinking, and I truly believe that that is an accurate assessment of someone's personality. Right. And so, for like the bandwidth, though. Um, the bandwidth, uh, we were lucky enough in Cambridge to just start our space at the time where the uh, cooperative ISP was starting up and we got involved in it. Um, if you guys have any questions about starting a cooperative ISP, I guess you can email me. Um, binary at sonicbeating.org is probably the easiest. I don't know if my hasty pastry mill works, but you can try that too. Uh, uh, actually, Nick, can you speak to this also? It's like what, what it took for you to get an ISP started? Um, call the telco, order a T1. Yeah, you want to get about simple. 10 Just people together cash. and order T1, uh, T1s in bulk. And if you go to the phone company and say, hey, I want to order 10 T1s, I want a three-year commitment on it, you'll probably get it, um, if you've talked to the right people, about $15 over loop cost, which at least in Boston is uh, somewhere around $190. Yeah. The other so cool thing is with the, uh, actually, the 2600 meetings is a great place to, uh, you know, meet new people. And I know, like, with the Hasty Pastry, we have... Uh, well, we have a 2600 meeting, and then we have what's called the 2621 meeting afterwards, which are yeah. the people who can drink I, and I, go <laughs> to the bar. You know, I, 2621. I, actually, I, I would uh, I would contradict that statement because, uh, like Sorry, or not, Sadian. most of us are severely broken people, and uh, severely broken people don't work well in a large group. Uh, so I, I I really recommend you take that into some form of consideration. I mean, be very careful about who you who you pick and choose. And if and at the initial onset, you're gonna have one or two and members that are gonna fall sleep out. With them. Don't, don't, don't sleep, sleep with, with each them. other. That's, it, it makes it complicated. Yeah. Don't sleep with them. So don't sleep with each other's wives, girlfriends, anything, or, yeah. or husbands, or, or, or boyfriends. But the 2600 meetings are a great way to get new people involved in the spaces, but you have a screening process, yeah. you see. Yeah. So uh, the original New Hack City West actually had a free T1, which is pretty chill, for two years. Uh, just because someone else inside the building we were in, we were in this huge, like, two-block-long building where 
American Industrial Complex in San Francisco, and it was where the the, the big hall walking scene from uh, the right stuff was filmed. Anyway, so there was a lot of dot com stuff in that building, and this, this, we basically made friends with someone who moved out of their space, and they had their T1 circuit still. And uh, so we just kind of like broke into the phone closet and routed their T1 into our space. We put up all these wires. We put up all these, uh, these like pipes into our space. We basically just rerouted their T1. Um, we rerouted their pairs into our building or into our space. And uh, we had a free T1 for two years. And until we were kicked out, we had uh, free bandwidth. It was nice. I want to get another, well, another I think question. We were lucky here. that we had problems with the T1. Well, you I guys, you, you, yeah, yeah, why don't you come up and start forming a line? Yes, you. Some, somebody at the ISP. Do you, have a, do you have any alcohol, though? I'm going to have to ask. <laughs> No. Uh, Somebody at the ISP must have been a, a CDC fan, so no, come on. even That's though there good. were problems, they uh, basically um, saw that it was... Get in line, motherfucker! Get in line, mofo! Get in line, mofo! You're in line. What up, Turk? Get in line. Guys, if you guys could take your pants off, everyone is in line, too. That'd be great. Yeah, I mean, that's like our policy. You take your pants off. Take my shirt. Okay. You're, you're wearing pants. Oh, that's not your pants, <laughs> sir. Can you, can you tickle your nipples a little bit? Shorts. Nipples a little. Are your nipples? Oh, are you happy like a little girl? If you're not wearing pants already, then I guess you're you win by forfeit. Let, let the man oh. let the man ask the question. Okay. Um, this Thank is you. specifically for the Pooski, but also for the rest of you. Is what kind of relationship do you have with the community, like around where these? where the hacker houses are, like the local community, not just the hacker community. Well, I think I told you about people hiding behind me to smoke crack in our case. Well, <laughs> <laughs> then like Pooski specifically, like do you have yeah. with the political community and things like that, or are the rest of you involved with political communities in the good. area? The thing about uh, Pooski, yeah. like uh, this was a building that was uh, rotting away for about two and a half years. Uh, a lot of people got scared because, you know, it was abandoned and uh, it was on fire and burned out. And actually the squatters, what they've done is they've uh, added uh, like a vegetarian restaurant inside, a bicycle rent place, and there used to be a, like a little store where you can uh, trade things in and get stuff in return. And that's where Pusky use is, uh, is now. So actually, the neighborhood is pretty much uh, satisfied with the squatters because they've done more than uh, the furniture store ever did. And uh, the only people that don't like the squatters naturally are the, is the city council because like, okay. they're in the center of the town Can you get and they're in uh, monumental buildings. I, I, I'd like to speak to that also as well. Um, our group, we have a lot of not very tight ties, but kind of loose ties to uh, to the Prometheus Radio Project and a lot of the other uh, indie groups in Philly. And, and so it's not that we give each other continuous direct help, uh, but we're definitely known for you know if you know there's a little bit of a question, you can kind of touch bases with our person and say, oh, here's a resource that's available. So it seems that once you actually start building one of these spaces, you uh, immediately start getting hooked in, hooked in with some of these other groups that exist. I think we should let the women filter to the front. Yeah, the anyway. Uh, the women, Ladies first. Where um, are your yeah, manners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. As I just us, want to make a comment to like wait, the Hasty wait, wait, Pastry. Wait, wait, wait. We have, uh, we're adjacent wait, wait. to a really good Greek restaurant, and they really like us. Wait, we are? Are we, are we additional I I, In terms Is that of the our Euros? neighbors and, and the, the people Greek around porno. us, um, our downstairs neighbors have told us, or informed us, actually, that it is polite to take off your shoes after 10 p.m. when you're living in an apartment building. So that, that's what they think of us. That's bad. Yeah. Um, Hello? I, I next, okay, next Excuse question. Me? Yes? Okay. Yes? Oh, is this so, someone? Uh, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Okay, so I'd like all of your attention. This isn't going to be directed to any one person, so I don't want to give out their name. But all I have to say is, baby daddy. <laughs> you know who you are. And um, next time, use this. <laughs> you don't call, you don't write, you don't yeah. send any support. So yeah. you, know what, you know what, I'm talking. I just, why are you wearing shoes? Uh, I have, in a kitchen. Yeah, yeah, I just want to point out. Why, why aren't you in the kitchen? You, you know Hacker. What? Hacker. <laughs> Hacker spaces of the, of the yeah. future pretty much have nurseries. There's right, a nursery in New Hack City. Uh, you got to take care of the kids. Excuse me? I'm right. not. Who's to say who the father really is? <laughs> right? Show me, the, show me the DNA test results and DNA we'll Fuck you. Next question, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Stupid so, girl in front. Thank you. So, I don't. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. Next question. You didn't talk about the women who cleaned for you, who cooked for you. Who do you think used to vacuum the Vax 11, huh? That was me. I used to call it. You're just still upset about the time we stuck you in the Vax 11. Locked you in the Vax 11. Because you, we just did it because you fit. And it, <laughs> at least it was warm. If all the ladies in the room could give their email address to Al, <laughs> Reverend Al, that'd be great. Yeah, Thanks so much. Right here at the end in the blue. Yeah, shirt. and their measurements. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about that hole down in the Hasty Pastry, down that goes into the basement. The you hole. Know, where you keep all those women who code your exploits all night, staying up. You know, those projects, yeah. Women can't read. <laughs> oh, they can't but, read about You know, fucking crazy talk, crazy talk, girl. We say you're not coding your little exploits. And then in the morning, we call into work when you're sick. After you've been on your coke and do marathon binge all night, yeah. <laughs> what do you think you're going to do without us, huh? Huh? Come on. Thank you very much. Next question, please. I, I'm sorry, she's suffering from hysteria. It's a common female, female condition. Female it's, it's caused by being out of can the I just, kitchen. Can actually. I just say, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies. Next, like, I know, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah. Weird. Yeah, just yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, if there's a lack of drama, I suppose I could pretend I had one of your children. Well, or, you're pretty cute, so. You'll find me. <laughs> show, 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 email, show me your belly right? button. Give Al your email address, yeah. Show me your belly button. <laughs> You have five months what that, 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 no, that, that was. was. Like a dragon and look over your shoulder at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. okay, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not sorry, but go ahead. I understand. No, I've, I've been thinking about starting up something, like some sort of like hacker space in my hometown. Um, though the problem is there are only about 45,000 people there, and I'm thinking, well, how do I attract enough people to this thing that, you know, I have a critical mass where we're not like dying roofies? from rent. I, honestly, you're going to you're gonna move to a new city. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, 45,000 right, people is so kind of a low density. You should, yeah, move, so you should move out of Winnipeg. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Seriously, 45,000 people is a low density. So you've got to figure yeah. that out of any given population, be it 100,000 people or 600,000 people, a it certain doesn't. percentage of that people are, are gonna, of, of that population are going to be the right kind for you. And uh, I've found, I mean, I've lived all over the, the U.S. And, and been part of... Uh, hacker collectives in various in various <laughs> places, um, that that percentage seems to be fairly constant. You know, the people that have the sort of hacker mentality, and then the people that have the hacker mentality that you can actually deal with, people that have some social skills. Because mm. um, Lord knows there's some of us with no social skills. Basically, you should go for diabetics. Diabetics <laughs> are really good. Yeah. So, 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 so you, start, you start with the people, though. You yeah, don't yeah. go looking for them. Oh, I mean, you. you start with, you have the good people, and then you go... You, f yeah. you find the, uh, yeah, like, I think that we've been fouled out, red card, which, oh. Oh, well, one last question. I've heard a thing fouled out. We are not out of time. We have seven minutes left, no, and, and I want to add to that, too, actually. Um, really look for your close friends. And, I mean, because what it comes down to is a hackerspace is a collective of, of friends. And, and friends are people you can trust. And it, trust means, I know, uh, warm and fuzzy. Can we, can we get Cue a group up the hug? Care bear. Can we have a group hug? But, no, it's about oh, people getting together who, you know, you can trust them to pay the rent on time and all of that. Oh, okay, okay, last We're getting a group Last here. question, last Mackie, question. Two-part Mackie. question for Gweeds, if you could stand up for this. Uh, How's it going? Is this going to involve... This is going to be naughty. So my Penis. question was, uh, where are your pants? And the follow-up to that was, uh, can I have your shorts? <laughs> um, I don't really see what that has to do with hacker ideals and ethics. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the downfall the of New Hack City West will really just uh, be completely explained by the absence of your pants. I don't think the 800 people in this room get your inside jokes. Um, <laughs> well, I think that it's about 11 o'clock. Where are your pants? In conclusion, diabetes. <laughs> it's about 11 o'clock, which means we're ready. No, to no, we got our... six minutes more, dude. No. We got six minutes more. We got five minutes. Uh, we're over around. All right. Well, okay. yeah, we're going to give that talk, too. We're, yeah. we're going to give a talk to you. Yeah. And, yeah. and we'll be giving that. We'll tell you what you need to do to start a pirate radio station. Absolutely. My um, name is Monk. I'm from uh, KBFR. 
I, I want to just say, first of all, that I think all of, us, all of us will be here for the rest of the conference and we'll be very approachable, seriously, here. By the so, way, if anybody doesn't realize that this is the 20th anniversary of the Cult of the Dead Cat. Yeah! yeah. Very um, nice. Can I also say that this is actually Veggie's 28th birthday? Can we get a singing happy birthday to him? Woo! Yeah. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! To you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Many more. After this, I'll be over at the Bloody Rock if anybody wants to buy me drinks. There you go. We'll all be here for the rest of the conference, and, and we really encourage all of you, if you have questions about you know the details of setting these kinds of places up, or if you want to buy us a drink at the Blarney Rock, which is right around the corner. Thank you very much. It's all about Blarney Rock. Hey. Show me He's the DNA test, baby. and we'll talk. Look like a frog. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank you Bye. very much. We appreciate you enduring our insanity. <laughs> <laughs>